Okay, so where did you um, where did you spend most of your childhood? I grew up in Winnipeg. Okay, the I, Peg. Winnipeg in the Peg, where it is cold. Mm. Love the Peg though. It's all right. It was yeah. a great place to grow up. It was a great place to grow up as an artist mm -hmm. because you could work with the guy. I worked with everybody who's. I didn't realize how important and big they were until I got out of Winnipeg, and I was yeah. like, Shauna Dempsey, she's my friend. Guy Matt and that. I, wow. you know, yeah, you know, exactly. we share beer together at the, <laughs> like, because it, because it was just the right size of community that you could work across discipline mm -hmm. really pretty easily, mm -hmm. um, and everybody knew everybody. So it was a great place to grow up as an artist, but. It's also really, you know, as a theater artist, it's pretty tough because there's there's very little, you know, there's Manitoba Theater Center that kind of oversees everything and that mm -hmm. makes it really hard for other things to to sort of grow up and there's no step up to the mm -hmm. Manitoba Theater Center. Right. Yeah, there's that place um what's the theater uh, um Prairie Theater Exchange. Prairie Theater Exchange? Yeah, Prairie theater. So it's kind of like Ottawa. You've got Manitoba Theatre Centre is like the NAC. Prairie Theatre Exchange is like the GCTC, GCTC. But then that's it. That's right. And a lot yeah. of little groups like popping up and then kind of, yeah. you know, yeah. trying to exist. It's just, you know, maybe it's critical mass or something. Mm -hmm. And a lot, not a lot of playwrights, like the playwrights who get out of Winnipeg actually have to get out of Winnipeg to get out of Winnipeg. Yeah. Right? There's very few playwrights who can make it from there. Mm -hmm. Rick Chafe. Uh, is still there, but he, it took him a long, long time. Like he's been writing plays longer than me, probably. Mm -hmm. And one of the challenges uh, when I was growing up, not necessarily now, but one of the challenges in Ottawa was if you're from there, they don't care. They, you know, you're, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm living in Toronto now, but we would always say, oh, who are you bringing in from Toronto? You know, is the same thing happening in Winnipeg? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What was, what is that? Is that a Canadian thing or what is it? Maybe it is. Like, maybe it's a, a thing about that we're not quite good enough thing. Yeah. If you live in the town, if you live here, then pff, well, you can't be talented or whatever. That's right. Huh. Um, so, well, tell me about you. Well, like, how did you get involved in the theater? <laughs> I was a theater rat. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I, when we moved to the city, when I was six, my parents gave me all the things they would have liked to have had. Right. So I had ballet lessons and piano lessons and theater drama school with the great Roberta Dolby, speaking of NTC, uh, as a teacher, and books and books and books and everything. And so... I thought that I was going to be an actor. And then I finished high school. As I was coming to the end of high school, I'm like, I'm going to go to school and be an actor. And my parents were like, no, you're not, mm -hmm. because you can't make a living in theater. I was like, oh, okay. So I started, you know, kicking around, because I didn't want to go to school just to go to school. So I kicked around for about six years doing a, a lot of things, traveling and running an ice cream store and all kinds of things. And then I went to university. Um, taking a really useful degree in English and French, because mm -hmm. that will get you a job. <laughs> and uh, and the University of Manitoba has a theater in the basement called the, the Black Hole. So I got sucked into the Black Hole. And by the time I got my undergrad, I was uh, working professionally in theater. I was hanging lights overnight and then going to classes. I was mm -hmm. so I actually had to defer my Victorian exam because I had a gig as a stage manager. And uh, my, my professor, Judy Flynn, actually gave me the deferment. She's like, yes, go and work. And yeah. um, that was great. So I did, so then I kind of kicked around in theater and I would do anything to avoid a day job. So I stage managed, I built sound, I coordinated costumes. I ended up, um, I ended up administering at the Winnipeg Fringe Festival, the first four Fringe Festivals. And I was watching, I, you know, I was doing little acting gigs here and there and thinking, I still thinking I wanted to be an actor. And I was watching all of these plays in the Winnipeg Fringe Festival and thinking, 
Well, Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones says 85% of everything is crap. And that's how you know the 15% that's good. Mm -hmm. So that's how I felt a bit watching the fringe was like, Mm -hmm. really? (laughs) Really? This is, wow, surely I can do better than this. Mm -hmm. And I've been trying to ever since. Mm -hmm. Like, so I started writing plays and I would work in the fringe in the daytime. Then I'd go and have a sandwich and then I'd come back because I didn't even own a computer at that point to my work computer and write. Mm -hmm. That's how I wrote my first play by night at mm-hmm. my desk at the Fringe Festival, and in the next in in the next year we produced it. Okay, before we get to your first play, uh, your your brothers must have been like, great, this is like broken the mold, we can do anything. Did, uh, no. Yeah, what do you have wrong? No, my in-between brother, Michael, mm-hmm. just wanted, he kind of wanted the life my dad, he wanted the perfect family life that he thought we had blown somehow. Right, okay. So he ironically worked for the Northern Store for many years as a buyer. Okay. I'm like, you're working for the Hudson's Bay, you know that, right? <laughs> There's something <laughs> wrong with this picture. <laughs> um, and, you know, married to try and make the family unit that we wrecked somehow. And then that didn't work. And so he married again. And now he has the family unit mm-hmm. that he wants. He has a boy and a girl and a wife and a house. and. Mm-hmm. He's now a buyer for another company, I forget whom, but they send him, my poor brother who hates to travel, Mm -hmm. gets sent to China every year and to Vancouver once a year, to Toronto three times a year, and he hates it. He just hates traveling. Why does he hate traveling? Because all he wants is that home, Home that, you know, that home thing, right? Um, And the other brother? The other brother took a long time for him to figure out what he was going to do. He wanted to be a firefighter. Went to the fire college, um, but never got picked up as a firefighter. Uh, but he became a paramedic, an emergency, uh, an EMT in Winnipeg, moved up the ranks, and now he's quite high in the emergency EMS at in Winnipeg, and he speaks for his um, his crew. Right. You know, we okay. he's often the guy quoted in the paper speaking. Right. Okay. So. Um, your parents have produced some kids who are pretty accomplished and very, uh, would you say, would you say that you're, you're driven? There's something about the I, guy, well, would you say that's true or would you, or is that wrong? I suppose it's surprising to me. Do, everyone does though, don't they? Like don't, aren't we all, doesn't everybody produce? No. No way. Eh? No, not everybody. No, I think that. Uh, all right, let's. From what I get, your, your your youngest brother was driven to have a home, to have to be settled, and to and and to have a, a stable job, and to have one that actually is, is quite quite um, significant in, in his field, and uh, and your other brother as well. He might have been lost for a bit, but he settled and he, he came to a place of of importance, and also you as well within. Canadian theater have come to a, a, a huge uh, place of prominence. Does that, did, does that, do you ever, do you ever wonder about that? Like, what is it in your parents that sort of produced these three kids? Well, there is a thing about, I mean, they did, to a certain extent, make themselves out of nothing, mm-hmm. you know, like make themselves successful make themselves my mother had no reason to succeed Mm -hmm. um and there were obstacles all the way along the way for her to succeed you know like terrible stories you hear about residential school my mother would my mother's stories are like she would go in and she'd say can I I want to look at the encyclopedia and the nun would say that's not for you (laughs) like keeping the encyclopedia keeping knowledge from the children you're supposed to be teaching Mm -hmm. um those kinds of stories, so that, which maybe just made her more damned about it. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to get the encyclopedia, and then I'm going to buy the encyclopedia for my child. Which, because mm-hmm. we did, we had two full sets of encyclopedia: the children's version and then the grown-up version. Right. Um, so that was your mother. That was my mother, okay. and my father, of course, you know, came from Ireland, big family, mm-hmm. came to Canada took what jobs he could get, eventually landing. When we got to Winnipeg, he ended up at um, Manitoba Housing and Renewal, where he essentially went out into the province and delivered housing for 
low income and Aboriginal communities. What is it about your dad that felt he wanted to spend so much time working with, in a, with a prison, working with Aboriginal communities, just and trying to help? What is it about him? Well, I think it's you know I think it's the I think people who have been who feel colonized mm -hmm. want to even the playing field more. Mm -hmm. And so he had a very, he obviously had an affinity for Aboriginal people in this country because mm -hmm. I have all of these photographs that he took at my mother's residential school because he, he was a photographer as well, oh. like a hobbyist, right? Mm -hmm. But not just pictures of my mother and my aunties and the, and people at residential school, but all the nuns and all the priests and little kids goofing around and boys climbing climbing trees and mm -hmm. and like I have I have this massive box of photographs from my mother's residential school mm -hmm. because my father took pictures documented mm -hmm. and um, so that's probably where he plus he came from a land that was occupied to another land that was occupied so he threw his lot in with the people who were occupied right, right. yeah and that meant a lot to him yeah Mm-hmm.